Noun clauses. For more information, look in your textbook on page 242 at chart 12 1, page 244 at chart 12 2, page 249 at chart 12 3. Let's go over clauses briefly. There are two kinds of clauses, independent and dependent clauses. A clause is a group of words with a subject and a verb. Independent clauses, which we also sometimes call sentences, are clauses, groups of words with a subject and a verb, that can stand on their own. Dependent clauses, however, have a subject and a verb, but cannot stand on their own. For instance, I live in Virginia is an independent clause. The subject is I. The verb is live. This sentence can stand on its own. On the other hand, because it is raining is a dependent clause. The subject is it. The verb is is raining. But this sentence cannot stand on its own because of the word because. It must be connected to another clause. That's why it's called a dependent clause. There are a few different kinds of dependent clauses. One of them is noun clauses, and that's what we'll be learning about today. A noun clause, for example, would come in a sentence like this. I don't know where he lives. Where he lives is the noun clause. The subject is he. The verb is lives. It's a group of words that collectively act as a noun. The main subject of the sentence is I. The main verb of the sentence is don't know. And the object of the verb know is where he lives. Where he lives is the thing that I don't know. So it's a noun. Noun clauses often begin with question words, but you need to pay attention to word order. If you have a question, like what did they say, in a noun clause, it would be something like this. I'm not sure what they said. Do you see the difference in word order? In questions in English, we put the verb in front of the subject. What did they say? Did, the verb, comes before the subject, they. In noun clauses, we use the question word what, but we put the subject before the verb as in a regular sentence. So instead of what did they say, it becomes what they said. Another example, where is he from? No one knows where he is from. Again, you see the difference. Where is he from, verb, subject. But in the noun clause, no one knows where he is from, subject, verb. Whose flowers are those? We have verb, subject, are, those. In the noun clause, I don't know whose flowers those are, subject, verb, those are. Now, when you're making noun clauses, usually what you're doing is you're kind of taking a question and you're transforming it into a clause. Many questions begin with question words, so it's easy to turn them into noun clauses. Some questions, however, are yes-no questions. Yes-no questions, we don't have a question word to use to turn it into a noun clause. So instead, we use the words whether and if. They basically mean the same thing, so you can use either one. So if our question is, will he help us, and we want to turn that into a noun clause, there are several possibilities. We could say, I don't know if he will help us. Again, notice that in the question, it's verb, subject, but in the noun clause, it's subject, verb, if he will help us. We could say, I don't know whether he will help us. Same meaning, if or whether, it doesn't matter, exactly the same meaning. We could say, I don't know if he will help us or not. Sometimes we add the phrase or not at the end of the clause. We also do this with whether. I don't know whether he will help us or not. Now, only with whether, you can't do this with if, but with whether, you can say, I don't know whether or not he will help us. Again, this doesn't work with if, only with whether. All of these sentences mean exactly the same thing. There is no change in meaning, and they are all equally common in English. So it really doesn't matter which one you say, because native speakers 
say all of this. These are all possibilities for what we would say. Nothing is better than anything else. Now it's your turn. You're going to take these questions and turn them into noun clauses. Your sentences will all begin with the independent clause, I don't know. Let's look at the answers. For the first one, does he have a problem? Verb, subject. This is a yes-no question, so we want to use whether or if, right? So there are many possibilities here. We could say, I don't know if he has a problem. I don't know if he has a problem or not. I don't know whether he has a problem. I don't know whether he has a problem or not. I don't know whether or not he has a problem. All of those would be correct. Please notice that in the question form, it's does he have, but in the noun clause form, it's he has. When you change your clause from a question into the clause, you want to make sure that the verb agrees with the subject. Don't forget to do that. That's really important. It's have in the question, but has in the clause. What are they doing? This one's easy. We have a question word. Question word noun clauses are very easy. I don't know what they're doing. Subject, verb. How many children does she have? Again, easy. Question word. I don't know how many children she has. Again, just make sure that you change the verb to agree with the subject. Can the doctor come right away? Here we have a yes-no question. So we have a lot of possibilities. I don't know if the doctor can come right away. I don't know if the doctor can come right away or not. You get the idea. All of these possibilities are correct. All of them are equally possible in English. And finally, how old is this milk? Easy question word. So we say, I don't know how old this milk is. Don't forget subject before verb. For more practice, open your book and do exercise 9 on page 246 and exercise 14 on page 249.